we knew that Kissinger had met with uh, the North Vietnamese side in Paris on October 9. So when he came on October 19 and gave us the text in English, mind you, and he asked us, he said, well, we got four days to sign. And of course, we politely said, well, you know, this is the first time we have been given this text, so we would like to have time to study it. But, but by the way, you know, where is the Vietnamese text? When I see the widows, the orphans, when I see so many tombs, so many sacrifices for the freedom and liberty of Vietnam, I reaffirm again that the whole people of South Vietnam will resist again any peace which demand the registration of South Vietnam and which will give the South Vietnam to the communist aggressors. I have great sympathy for Chu. And at the same time, I have great sympathy for our problem. We faced 65 congressional resolutions in the year 1972 alone that were urging unilateral withdrawal from Vietnam. And uh, Mr. Krishna said, well, if you sign this, we're going to bring peace. Uh, and we'll be, uh, South Vietnam will be uh, developed, people will be happy, at which President Thieu said, listen, you know, we have the interest and the future of our country. We are not looking for Nobel Prize. South Vietnam refused to sign. With his deal facing collapse, Kissinger hastily reassured Hanoi America still wanted an agreement. We believe that peace is at hand. <clears throat> we believe that a, an agreement is within sight. <clears throat> it is inevitable that in a war of such complexity that there should be <clears throat> uh, occasional difficulties in reaching a final solution. This latest setback in the Vietnam peace talks did not damage Nixon. He was easily re-elected for a second term. Back in Paris, Kissinger had to put Chu's objections to the North Vietnamese. How do I get out of here? I thought you weren't having a meeting today, sir. Well, it do something surprising. It's getting to be difficult to have a secret rendezvous in Paris. It certainly is. Will you be meeting again tomorrow, sir? Uh, we expect to, yes. One day, we were on the verge of uh, finalizing the text. The next day, there were suddenly 10 or 12 uh, different uh, issues that popped up uh, and were unresolved. And then Le Duc Tho said that he had to go back to Hanoi for consultations. Le Duc Tho left Paris and the talks broke down. Nixon ordered air raids on North Vietnam, hoping to bludgeon Hanoi into agreement and at the same time bolster the South. Over 12 days, Hanoi and Haiphong came under the most sustained bombing campaign of the war. The bombing served its purpose. North and South Vietnam were ready to agree to the deal that Kissinger put together. Under the peace accords, American troops would leave Vietnam, the Saigon government would remain in power, but North Vietnam's troops would stay in the south. Nixon called it peace with honor. It so happened that with Mr. Kissinger, who had wanted to play the triangular, uh, to do the detente, and, and Vietnam had to go in order for detente to happen. So this is my own analysis, and then that unfortunately, you know, was not very good for the South Vietnamese people. Good evening. The biggest White House scandal in a century, the Watergate scandal, broke wide open today. The Attorney General, Richard Kleindienst, has resigned because, in his own words, he had close personal and professional associations with people who may have broken the law. 
The two closest men to the president, H.R. Haldeman, his chief of staff, and John Ehrlichman, his chief domestic advisor, have resigned. Last week, both men were fighting hard to keep their jobs. We had a great staff system in the White House for dealing with crises. We didn't apply that system to Watergate. I think part of the reason was we didn't consider it a crisis. It was a very small potatoes episode. I had no prior knowledge of the Watergate break-in. I neither took part in nor knew about any of the subsequent cover-up activities. I neither authorized nor encouraged subordinates to engage in illegal or improper campaign tactics. That was, and that is, the simple truth. Regardless of Watergate, the process of detente continued. Brezhnev came to America for a second summit with Nixon. In California, the Soviet leader partied with Hollywood film stars. The Russians were still keen to deal with the American president. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> In spite of Nixon's denial of guilt over Watergate, he was accused of obstructing justice and faced impeachment by Congress. In August 1974, Richard Nixon, the man who took America into detente, gave up the fight and resigned. His successor was Gerald Ford. The Soviet leadership was astonished by Nixon's downfall. They thought, how could the most powerful person in the United States the most important person in the world be legally forced to step down for stealing some silly documents. It was so contrary to the mentality of the Soviet leaders that a person in such a senior position could be removed by legal means. They simply couldn't understand it. There were various suspicions. One of those suspicions was that it was done deliberately by the enemies of rapprochement between America and the Soviet Union. In Vietnam, the 1973 peace accords had not stopped the fighting. By April 1975, South Vietnamese troops were struggling to defend Saigon against Hanoi's final offensive they could expect little help from the Americans. The Congress of the United States refused to supply the kind of military assistance that was necessary to keep the South Vietnamese military forces strong. South Vietnamese who had fought and worked alongside the Americans against the communists besieged the U.S. Embassy. The Americans were getting away, but they had lost the war, and now they could not even save thousands of their South Vietnamese friends.